What's up guys? A couple months ago, I put together a video, how to defeat pressure fighters. Got the most views, most likes, etc, etc. Now, today, we are going to talk about how to be the pressure fighter. And I've had a couple of fights where I've just steamrolled down my opponents, pushed them to the ring ropes, and just made them pay for letting me be the pressure fighter. We are going to take clips of that fight. I'm going to explain to you why it works, how to make it work for you, and what you can do to be an effective, dangerous, scary, pressure fighter. Guys, that is our topic of conversation today. All right guys, pressure fighters, how do you become one? What can you do to become overwhelming, inspiring in the ring? It's really fun when you're on the side of moving to your opponent, hitting them, hitting them, always in their face, always making them run away from you. They don't want to be there and you're just having a ball. This video is being put together because somebody took the time to make a request. If you guys have your own request, throw it down in the comments below. If you haven't already, give the video a like, get subscribed, and let's keep moving on. So today, guys, we're going to be looking at one of my fights from 2016, that poster right there, actually, this belt right here, where I fought in China. And little funny story, guys, about this whole fight, I didn't even know which opponent I was actually facing until two weeks before there was a miscommunication probably the language barrier I was originally asked these two guys which one do you want to fight and I chose this guy but for some reason two weeks before the fight they went oh we thought you meant this guy and this is the guy who's been training this is the guy who's been prepping this is the guy who you are fighting now so I kind of did a whole reversal of my strategy because the other guy I was going to be fighting was quite different he was stocky he was bigger I was going to have to initiate a little bit more movement be a little more cautious and then I saw who I was fighting and went look at this guy he's lengthy he has killer knees he's really good at a distance but he doesn't look too strong and I think I can change my strategy and be a pressure fighter against him which is great because I went into the boxing gym and was getting outskilled by some boxers who were very good and then I found that if instead of playing here and trying to play that game if I just pressured in on them and just took a beating to them they couldn't handle it so I'd been having a lot of success being a pressure fighter in the gym and I was able to just quickly reverse it into a kickboxing strategy which is what we're going to talk about right now so the first thing about being a pressure fighter which I want to emphasize is there's a time and a place don't have it be your only strategy just as I don't have it be my only strategy I change up depending on who I'm fighting but the right type of person to apply pressure to is similar to what we just talked about somebody who likes long knees, somebody who likes to initiate long punches, somebody who doesn't like throwing lots of combinations from in tight. And being able to recognize when it's beneficial to be the pressure fighter is so important because if you go in with the wrong strategy and you go, I'm going to pressure fight this guy and he wants you right there, that could be a terrible plan, especially if you're more skilled and you have the ability to work on the outside and pick somebody apart. So remember, there's a time and a place. It just so happened that this opponent with his lengthy shots, with his slimmer build than me, was perfect to apply some pressure and almost bully him around the ring. Now that moves us to our next point when we're talking about where we want our opponent. If we are trying to be the pressure fighter, we obviously do not want to be in the middle of the ring because that gives people the opportunity to take angles, to move from side to side very easy. They can back out, angle off. You're constantly chasing. It's very difficult. But if you find somebody who doesn't take those angles or who is a little bit stationary, and you have that ability to walk forward and pressure them backwards you right away know okay this pressure strategy is going to work and that's what I was able to do in this fight very simply walk forward on my opponent and let him back straight up straight up straight up eventually you're going to find that they run out of space that their back is against the ring ropes now it's perfect having somebody's back against the ring ropes is amazing because at the point where their back touches those ropes they now only have two directions that they can travel they can only go this way and now moving quickly into my next point one of my favorite things to do is to literally apply pressure to them with my gloves so instead let's imagine that you know bob right here has his gloves up so his gloves come to about here instead of me standing out here trying to just stay close to him stay in his bubble his zone i'm actually going to put my gloves up to my head and i'm going to pressure forward as far as i can until i make connection with his gloves now i'm literally pushing him backwards i'm not letting my weight fall forward where my head's past my hips i stay here i stay strong and i just pressure forward and now what I can do very nicely is at any point continue to push with one arm, 
disconnect the other and start off my combo and then as soon as I finish I go right back to pressure it. Keeping that force against somebody whether it's the cage whether it's the ring it gives them very little movement and when they have very little movement they're going to feel more pressured more overwhelmed and you can control so much of the fight right from here. So don't be scared sometimes to so just get your gloves up to your head and push yourself up to something solid and provide some support and make them feel overwhelmed with that literal pressure. You want to be a pressure fighter? Sometimes literally pressure them backwards. Now to utilize pressure, it's very, very good to have a tight high guard. I probably don't want to have my hands down here and be doing lots of this because when I get in tight, it's easy for them to hit me and then find their escape. But if I have my hands up, I make that nice shell so there's nowhere for them to land those shots. There's nowhere for those punches to sneak through. Now from here, when I'm applying this pressure, when I'm trying to get in close, it doesn't matter if I'm closing the distance or if I'm at that distance where I want to be, right from here, this high tight guard is going to do wonders for me. And if you have not perfected this, this is something that you can do just remembering to pull your hands back to your head. Whenever you finish your punches, the hands draw right back. I don't go under the eyes, I go over the eyes. Over the eyes instead of under is very important because with my hands down here, the whole forehead is completely open and if I get hit in the forehead, it might not be the worst spot to get hit, but it's definitely still going to send me for a jolt. It's still going to rock me and probably give people enough time again to escape. So that high guard is gloves above the eyes. And then at the same time, I want to protect my body. So instead of having high guard and elbows high, I go high guard and I just curl my torso a little bit so I can protect my body at the same time. I recently did a video on Nikki Holtzkin and talking about his guard. You can check that out up there. And he has basically the perfect pressure style guard, which we're talking about right now. Now, the next thing to recognize about being a pressure fighter, if your goal is to never get hit, you want to be Floyd Mayweather, you want to get hit as least as possible, being the pressure fighter is not for you. Recognize that as I'm the pressure fighter, I am going to take shots. I'm going to get hit. But most of the time, because the person's backing up and they don't have full power, these shots do not really hurt you. It's the difference between a shot where it's clunk and you're going out and one where, you know, it kind of touches, but there's no massive head movement, no massive repercussions for pressuring forward and taking those shots until you get your opponent where you want them and then it's time for you to go to work. Now, very, very important about being a pressure fighter is using footwork. We already talked about moving forward, but that's not really too difficult. That's just pressure forward, pressure forward, high guard, try and get them to the ropes. But if the guy's any good, they're going to try and find those angles. They're gonna try and get off the ropes, but as we talked about, they can only move laterally. If they're moving on that lateral angle, all I have to be able to do, whether I'm pushing against them or I'm back a little bit, is track them. They move that way, I stay right in front of them. I'm always tracking, I'm always moving, I'm always having my hands high, and I'm always applying that pressure, but my footwork is still important. An easy way to do this, an easy way to drill this style, is just get somebody across from you. Like if I'm standing across from you right now, you just track my movement, you move with me. If I move here, you move here. If I move here, you move here. The person is going to try and switch angles, and you're going to try and stick with them the whole time. If you find that easy, if you're in front of the camera and you're like, oh, this is easy work. I can just follow, I can follow. I'm not having too much trouble. Your footwork is good enough. This does not have to be exceptional, high level, tricky footwork where like you're throwing punches and stepping out on angles and cutting off. It's just basically sort of sidestep, but from your fighting stance and your ability to have your hands up, move your feet and throw punches if needed. That is a great pressure style tactic to really overwhelm somebody and stick with them all the time. Never let them regain the center of the ring. If you let them retake the center of the ring, if you let them circle around you and now your back's against the ring ropes, you've got to do all the work of getting them back there. So being able to track somebody saves you a lot of energy, a lot of time, a lot of work trying to reset the fight to where you want it. Lateral movement, don't take it for granted Implement it in your shadow boxing, your bag work, basically everywhere. Now, when we look at this fight, there's a decent amount of time where I had to track him, but I did my best work when I got him in the corner. When somebody's in a corner, when they're here, all of a sudden they can't move laterally. They can't move side to side. They have to cut off on these two 
45 degree angles. It's much easier for me to control somebody if instead of them moving here and here, they can only move this direction. Basically, if they wanna move either direction, they can walk right into strong hooks. And as I continue to throw clips up of me pressuring this guy in the corner, you will see, yes, this is 100% where Gabriel has his best moments in the fight. And it doesn't matter if it's this fight, other fights, in sparring this is always where i've had my most success so if you can pressure somebody to the corner that is a massive strategy that is going to benefit you again that is mostly reliant on your footwork your high guard your ability to pressure somebody backwards and put them where you want them basically taking all the notes we've done so far putting them together and then going okay once we've accomplished all that now we direct them where we want them we put them in the worst spot possible and the best spot possible for us in this exchange of me being the stronger, tougher, bigger fighter who wants to push back the guy who wants distance, who might not be physically as capable as us. Being the pressure fighter is an absolute joy if things are going your way because you just get to feel so dominant. I would say I enjoy it even more than being the defensive fighter who's picking apart the pressure fighter. I've done that as well. You know, moving around, the guy comes to throw, you fade back, you hit him, you fade back. That makes you feel good, for sure. You're like, oh man, I'm out thinking this guy, I'm out techniquing him, I'm just the better fighter. But when you're pressuring somebody down, you just feel so dominant and it's awesome. A couple other additional notes about being a pressure fighter guys is being very aware of where you feel comfortable with your head. For me I don't like going down too low being a pressure fighter on the way in because I feel like it's dangerous for me. I like staying high and using my elbows and my forearms to control the distance and control and smother the guy. But then once I get in tight I don't mind letting my head drop down and sort of coming over my front toes. This just gives me a little bit more weight forward, makes me a little bit harder to deal with, and because I've moved from here to here, I find it much more difficult for them to land hard punches to the head. It's almost like if I'm against Bob, if I'm right here, I can get nice power shots, but as soon as I get into here, it's very difficult for me to find any momentum, any power from this tight range. So once again, head up on entry, and then head drops, very slightly and if I can get my chin under their chin or my hands right in their face it becomes very difficult for them to get any good work done and the final thing guys about being a pressure fighter is if your opponent is smart eventually they're gonna go okay you know what I'm running I'm running that's not working I'm trying to cut the angles that's not working my back are against the ring ropes now I really need to protect my head that is the priority for most people when they get smothered there they go uh oh my head and as we already talked about because their back is against the ring ropes and they're generally not able to concave their back and protect their body the whole torso is open so don't just Go, I'm a pressure fighter, I'm hunting the head, I'm hunting the head, I'm coming for the knockout. Hit them in the head a couple times and then smack down to the body and then put that pressure back on, return up to the head, find the body in between. You can see multiple clips in this fight where I transition from up to the head, go down to the body, and then when I start seeing the openings, return back to the head. That nice combination of tacking low, attacking high, applying pressure, and smothering them. Again, guys, one of my favorite styles. There's so many things that we could add in to be the pressure fighter, but today we are just talking about how I was the pressure fighter in this fight that we watched. If you guys wanna see more tactics on being a pressure fighter, what other fighters do to be successful with moving forward, let me know in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you haven't already, get subscribed. Guys, train hard, and I'll see you back here soon for another video.